。同学们好，老师好。Hello, everybody. It is Monday, the twenty-first of March, and we are in the second half of the first section, the Young Family Tai Chi Chuan traditional form. Today, we're actually going to be working on the brush knee sequence. So, none of the movements that we'll be doing today are new technically, but the transitions are somewhat new. So, we'll spend a little bit of time. Uh, that's that's where the work is, and in fact, that's quite common for Tai Chi Chuan. That all the interesting things、uh, are in the transitions. So let us、uh, begin with our standing practice, and we'll start、uh, in parallel stance. So check that your feet are parallel, facing towards the front. Bend the knees. And arms out in front of you. And rounded. So we'll spend about three minutes here. So start with your footwork. Check your stance. That you have your weight over the bubbling well, so that the、uh, weight's a little bit more on the ball than the heel of the feet, but you can't lift either of them easily. Your crotch is rounded. So that means that your knees are aligned with your toes. And that the weight is even on the inside and outside of your feet. Now check that your waist is relaxed. That means that your hips are dropping straight down. When we say that, what we mean is that the sacrum, the、uh, flat of your pelvis at the back, is in line with your lower back. So your lower back and your pelvis are hanging straight down. Now try and connect this. To your chest being absorbed, so to absorb the chest and round the back, feel your fingertips pulling on the palms, palms pulling on the elbows. That's one minute. Elbows pushing, pulling on the shoulders, shoulders pulling on the spine. And so the goal of standing practice is to practice being relaxed, Feng Song. And relaxed is that all the joints and tendons are open and connected. So you should feel or explore feeling connections when you adjust your waist relaxing. How does that affect your back opening? Now that your back is open, see how that affects your shoulders sinking. Sometimes when we pull open the back, the shoulders rise up. Shoulders sinking, elbows dropping. And now connect your shoulders sinking to your head rising up. Sometimes the best way to sink your shoulders is to imagine that your head is light and empty and pushing up. That's two minutes. And in the last minute, now that we have this posture, you can keep working on each of those four things: head up, shoulders and elbows down, chest absorbed, back rounded. And waist relaxed, but that's in service of breathing freely, breathing easily, feeling our abdomen moving as the breath goes in and out of our lungs. So, in the last thirty seconds, just take some soft in breaths through your nose and out breaths, and see if your breath is easy. When you practice on your own, start adjusting. So adjust your hips a little bit. Adjust how you relax your waist, and see if your breathing is easier. If it is, go a little bit further. And if it gets tight again, release a little bit until you find the Goldilocks sweet spot. That's three minutes. So relax. And we're going to practice our bow stance because we're going to be doing a lot of bow stance today. So standing practice helps us get into our bodies what bow stance feels like. So we'll start with the back leg pointing out to the corner. Step the front foot out, shoulder width, front toe pointing to the front, to the straight direction. Check. That you have 60% on the front leg, 30% on the back, 
front toe to the front, back toe to the corner. Front leg is bent, but knee not further, not over the toes. So you should be able to look down and see your toes. Back leg is straight, but not locked. And now check your torso setting, or your body setting. Your torso is leaning forward so that your back is in line with your back leg and your tailbone is centered on the line between your feet so that when you look at your legs from the front you actually see a little bit of an arch and so now we can do our checks check that your hips are dropping straight down back rounded chest absorbed shoulders sinking elbows dropping and the head is up, expressing your spirit through your head rising. And so we'll change now to the other side. So shift your weight back, bring the front foot in, put it back, pointing out to the corner at 45 degrees. Step the other leg forward, shoulder width, put the toe pointing forward, and get into a bow stance again. So the same requirements. Feet direction, bubbling well. Check that your crotch is rounded, that your, particularly your back knee is not tilted in. Back knee is nice and open. Front knee, open. Torso setting, torso is tilted forward. Tailbone between your heels on the line from front to back. Head up. Shoulders sinking down, elbows dropping down. Open your back by pulling on the elbows all the way through to the fingertips. And drop your hips straight down. So that's relax the waist. And change, shift back your weight. We'll do the other bow stance. So back foot to the corner, step out with the first foot to straight now. We're going to have our torso vertical. Still 60 40 front and back, but our hips are open a bit more. So it's more than 45 degrees from the front direction to the direction that your hips are in. Your arms, your chest is in that same direction, but your head is pointing straight forward. So your, your nose is in the same direction as your front foot. Feel your hips dropping down so your waist is relaxed. Feel your crotch is rounded so that both legs are nice and round, knees and toes are aligned. Round the back, sink the shoulders, drop the elbows, head looking up. You may find here that your neck is a little bit stiff. You're, you're not used to turning your head this much be easy on yourself, necks are not things you want to mess with. So if you can't get your nose completely pointing in the same direction as your front foot, that's okay. Just work on it. Over time, it'll get better. And the other side, shift back your weight, bring the foot in to 45 degrees. Step out the other side, shoulder width apart, shift your weight forward. Hips open more than 45 degrees, chest the same direction as your hips, but looking in the direction of the front foot. Torso vertical. Check that your hips are level. Necessary, drop the back hip a little bit. That often rides up. And we'll check head up. Shoulders sinking, elbows dropping. Chest rounded, chest absorbed with the back rounded. Drop the hips down to relax the waist. And for the last few seconds, forget about all of that and just see what your breathing is like. See how easily and freely you can breathe in and out. Feel your abdomen moving as your breath moves. And we'll come out of a stance and come back 
to our starting position. Very good, that's our standing practice for today. Uh, before we go on and start doing our moving practice, are there any questions? Okay, not hearing any, welcome to people that have joined, Yukiko and Pat and Tessie is with us and Maria Franco is here as well, welcome everybody. So we are going to um, go through the form, we're getting into the second half of the first section now. I'll practice it through with you twice. The first time I'm going to concentrate on the footwork and the second time I'm going to concentrate on the coordination of, of the different parts of the body. But, you know, focus on uh, if you want to work on something else, of course, by all means, feel free. The first time we're going to practice, we're going to focus on where the weight is. And so when we talk about empty and full, we can say which leg is full. So if I'm standing on one leg, this leg is full. If I now shift my weight over to the other one, that leg is full. And so when, for example, I'm in a bow stance, I've got 60% on the front, I sit back, I've now got 70% on the back, I'm moving full from the front to the back. And so constantly as we do the form, we're moving from empty to full. And that's an example of yin and yang. Uh, whenever there's movement, yin and yang are interchanging. And so as we do the form, we're constantly shifting our weight from one foot to the other. And it's important that we can do that because that means we're agile. So I'm going to start uh, assuming that we're all facing in the same direction. So I'm facing uh, to the front, to the screen direction for you. That's the 12 o'clock direction. And let us practice. Prepare. Opening. Weight doesn't change on the legs, so rotate and lift the arms and press down the arms. Keep the palms parallel to the ground as you press down until they get in front of your hips. Ward off left, shift the weight slightly to the right, open the right toe. Now shift all your weight onto the right leg as your arms open. Step out now, smooth weight onto the front leg. You've now got 60% on the front leg. Ward off right, shift weight back slightly, turn the left toe to the corner. As you circle your arms, all the weight goes onto the left foot, the right steps in and out. Root with the heel and now pour the weight 60% into the front. Roll back, as both arms rotate and swing to the right, nothing changes. Now as the arms swing to the left, weight pours into the left leg, so we end up with 70% in the back leg. Press, arms, circle, closed. Now weight goes on to the front. 60% on the front is now full. Push, flatten the palms. As you sit back, weight's moving onto the back leg. As you move forward, weight is moving back onto the front leg. Single whip, flatten the palms. Now sit most of your weight onto the left. As you rotate, almost all the weight is on the left. As you come back to the right, shift your weight onto the right leg, straighten the hip, make the hook. Now pick up the left, the right is full, root with the left foot. Now shift weight onto the left foot. So now you've got 60% on the left. Raise hands, step forward, shift weight slightly, turn the left toe in. Move all the weight onto the left foot as the right foot picks up. Root with the right, arms close, 30% on the front. White crane spreads its wings. Rotate the palms, pull down, all the weight onto the left. Now pick up the right so there's no weight on it. As the arm cross, put it down. Circle the arms up, 30% on the front as you finish. That's white crane. Left brush knee, rotate the palms. Big down circle with the one, up circle with the other arm. Now step out with the left, fall on the right, root. And now gradually as you push forward, weight at 60% goes onto the front leg. Handstrong loop, shift all your weight onto the left. Bring the back foot in. Now pushing with the ball, pull the arm right on back. 
30% on the front, lift and push with the left and the right. And relax. Let's do it the second time. Now I'm going to be talking about the coordination. So what we are trying to do throughout the form is to coordinate different parts of the body, coordinate the feet and the arms, coordinate when the waist turns and the arm move. And so this time I'm going to face you so that you can see my arms a little bit better. But here, the same movements, but I'll call out some places where the feet and the arms arrive at the same time so that those we call the coordination points. Prepare. Opening, rotate and lift. Press down, keeping your legs straight to the bottom. Grass boats, tail, ward off left, shift your weight slightly. Start opening the arms. Now, big circle with the arms. When your left foot heel touches, the arms are closed. As you shift your weight down, arms move at the same time and finish at the same time. Ward off right, shift your weight slightly, turn the left toe in. Now again, as the arms circle, the right foot goes in and out. When the arms are closed, right heel touches. Then move both arms so that they both finish at the same time that your leg movement finishes. Roll back, rotate and swing at the same time. Now we're going to swing back and shift our weight back so the swing and the weight shift happen at the same time when you finish swinging you finish the weight shift press close your arms in now press out with the feet to the waist to the hands everything finishes together push flatten the palms pull back with the hands as you sit back with the weight here's a coordination point at the back push forward Push up with the arms, push out with the leg. Here's a coordination point. Single whip, sit back your palms, pull with the left arm, big circle with the right, coming back, straighten the hips, pivot on the left, or make a hook if you're in this position. Now step out, bow stance, the left arm is at 45 degrees. As your foot flattens, the hand rotates to the side, coordination point. Keep moving your weight forward, the front knee bends, the arm straightens. Raise hands, step forward, shift your weight slightly. Turn in, open the arms, root with the right, finish with both arms at the same time. White crane spreads its wings. Rotate the palms to face each other, pull down. Here again, we've got the big circle with the arms, which finishes when that touch with the heel. Now, open one arm up, one arm down. This is white crane. Left brush knee, rotate both palms. One arm down circle, one arm up circle. When the arms come to the side, heel touch with the left leg. Brush right arm to the right shoulder as your foot flattens. Keep pushing as the knee bends when you finish, the right hand strikes out. And there we are. So that is the form that we're going to do. What I'd like to do is to just review a few things about uh, the last two movements that we learned, that we did from last week, starting at White Crane. So I'd like you to. Um, so what I want to underline here is let's go to here when we so the first coordination point is the arm circle and the heel touches so when our arms are out at the side we're touching with the heel here then there's two movements one is the foot flattens and the right arm comes to in front of the right shoulder and the second one is the right arm pushes out. Let me just show you what I'm seeing some of us doing, uh, and then we can work on that a few times. So the first two parts are good. So one, we're rotating the palms. Two, we're doing the swing. Now what some of us are doing is both arms are just coming forward like this. 
So we're, we're going from this position to just here in one movement. It's actually two movements. So from this posture here, first as the foot flattens, the right arm comes in front of the shoulder and the left arm goes to the side. And then the second, it pushes out. So let's just practice that together a couple of times. So we're starting in white crane. One, right palm faces you, left palm goes into lifting position. Two, right arm down circle, left arm up circle, arms to the back, heel touch. Now three, right arm to the shoulder, left, brush the table out to the front, foot is flat. Four, bend knee and strike out. Again, I'll turn it into a slightly different direction. I'll do it from here. So one, rotate the palms. Two, circle, one arm down, one arm up, then arm up and down. Heel touch, arms are out to the side. Brush, so the one arm comes to the shoulder, the other one is in front of you, and then push. Two distinct movements. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to just point out in terms of the ending posture for this one. Uh, so when we finish in left brush knee, uh, our chest is square to the front. So some of us, when, when, when we press out, are actually pressing so far that your chest is overturning. So when we finish our push out, our chest is square to the side here. The other thing that's at right angle is the palm. So we call this the palm sitting. Some of us actually have our palms at an angle like this. Imagine that you're pushing on a door. So your palm is actually sitting. The energy point, what you're striking your opponent with is the heel of your hand. So that's what needs to be out there and connecting with the opponent. So let's do that once together. So we can just fix those things. So we're in white crane spread to the swings, going into left brush knee. One, rotate the palms. Two, big swing out to the side, heel touch. Now three, arms to the shoulder and one arm to the front. Four, push out. Check your closing position. Is your chest square to the front? And is your right palm sitting vertically? And release. Um, okay, the other thing that I wanted to mention in terms of um, arm movements is with hamstrum lute. So with hamstrum lute, we are starting in left brush knee, so left foot forward, and we bring the back foot in, we pull back, and one arm goes up, one arm comes down. And what you can, what I hope you can see is that one, both palms are, are tilted down slightly. So the palms are not like this and they're not like this either. They are tilted down slightly. And the other thing I want you to notice is that your chest is open to the corner so that your tiger's mouth on the right hand is pointing at the left forearm center. So this is your ending position. So let's just do left brush knee to hand strong loot. So one, shift forward weight, bring the back foot in, right hand goes down a bit. Now as you push back with the ball of the left foot, pull with the right Arm. So the right hand comes back, elbow bends, chest opens to the corner. Change your footwork to the heel. Now left arm comes up, right arm comes down. Again. Shift weight forward, yield forward with the right arm. It goes down a bit. As you push back with the left ball, goes up around the top of the wheel, Heel touch, lift with the left, push down with the right. And your, your, your gaze throughout all of this as you've been looking 
in the straight direction because that's where your opponent is. Okay. Before we go on to talk about footwork, are there any questions? Not exactly a question, but I keep finding myself in a bow stance with my feet not far enough apart. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure like, what I'm doing wrong. I keep adjusting it and pushing it out further after I've landed. So when you say not far enough apart, Rima, do you mean not wide enough from each other or not? They're not, uh, they're not shoulder width apart. Okay. Um, they're, they're too, they're, too they're closer to one line, two sides, or they're just a little yes. beyond that. Yeah. So one of, one of the things that may be happening for you, and it, it happens for most of us, is you know, we see people like Master Young Jin and others practicing, and they've got this beautiful long bow stance, right? And go, oh my God, I really want that bow stance. Um, and actually, we sacrifice the width by trying to go for length. So the first thing to think about is just make sure you've got enough width. Don't worry about the length. Just make sure you've got enough width. And even if you've got hardly any width at all, get that set because your the length forward back is dependent on your stance the requirement is the width sideways side to side the one that you're struggling with rima thank you okay keep working and let's see how that goes and a few more folks have joined hey judy is with us as well okay so let us uh, practice the footwork because the footwork is something we're going to be using a lot today uh, as we do a sequence of movements. Uh, so let us first review uh, what we did. Uh, actually, let's start this way so that you can see. And I will, I will turn with my back to you in a moment. And actually, I think I will add the other camera. Uh, I will remove it again. But this way you can actually see me from two directions. Okay, so let's not worry about the arms right now. So we've done white crane. So we're in an empty stance, ball touch. We want to go into a bow stance. So what we do is we pick up the front foot and then just step it out shoulder width apart and shift forward. If we now want to go into an empty, into an empty stance again, we bring the back foot in, shift the weight back forward, bring the back foot in. If we're gonna land on the heel, we press with the ball and land on the heel. So now we should be one line, two sides. So now we're in an empty stance, we can go back to a bow stance. Shift the weight back, pick the leg up, step it sideways, bow stance with, Heel, ball, toe, bend, knee. So we're back in a bow stance. Now we're going to go into an empty stance again, uh, but this time we're going to land on the ball. And so when we land on the ball, we push back with the heel. So bring the back foot in, push back with the heel, so the toe lifts, pick up the foot, put back the ball. So let's do it in this direction. So we're starting with an empty stance ball touch. We're going to go into a bow stance, step sideways and shift the weight forward. To go to an to a empty stance, let's say we're going to go empty stance ball touch. So we're going to, oh no, empty stance heel touch. So we're going to push back with the ball. Bring in the back foot, push back with the ball, pick up the foot, land with the heel into a bow stance, step wider. Now we're going to do an empty stance, land on the heel. So we're going to push with the ball, bring the back foot in, push back with the heel, and land on the ball. Now, when you practice this at home, uh, for, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do the other side. So I started with an empty stance with my weight on my right leg. You should also practice starting with your weight on your left leg. You can do the same thing uh, on the other side so that you strengthen both sides of your body. 
The one thing I wanted to just underline uh, as we look at this footwork is when we bring the back foot in, so we're, we're in a bow stance, we're going to go into an empty stance. We don't bring the back foot towards the front foot. It pretty much just goes that sideways. So don't, as you shift forward your weight, bring the back foot in. Then you really have to make a big adjustment with the front foot. Essentially, all we're doing is the back foot just comes in sideways. And in fact, when we go to the bow stance, the front foot just goes out sideways. So that's the transition. And in fact, this transition you already know. Uh, because the, here are the transitions that we that we were, pra were practicing today. We were in white crane, left brush knee, so we went into bow stance. Then when we do hamstrung loop, we bring it in and go into hamstrung loop. So you know these transitions, just keep practicing them. Another transition that we have practiced before that we're going to use a lot today, and it, it requires a lot of attention, is going from one bow stance to the next. So let's practice that together. So let's say we're starting in a bow stance, and I, I didn't say this at the beginning, but my practice is some of you, all of you maybe have realized, I've got this red on the left. And so, that, so you can see which side the left is. And at the end of this, when we get to the end of section one, you can tell me if this helps or not. Okay, so we're in the bow stance. I want to make a bow stance to the other side. The first thing I'm going to do is shift my weight back slightly and open my front toe 45 degrees. When I open my front toe 45 degrees, make sure your crotch stays rounded so that particularly the back knee is in line with the back foot. It's very easy, <clears throat> and actually as we go through this movement, you'll see, to actually bring your back knee in. So keep the crotch round and keep your back knee open. Your front knee is also in line with the front foot. Now we're going to move our weight onto this new front foot. Move your weight in the direction of the bubbling well, so in the direction of your foot, which means in the 45 degree direction. Don't move in the straight direction where your body's going to go, because then you're going to fall over. So move your weight in this direction, step through, Heel ball toe, bend knee. And we can do it the other side. Open the front toe. Check that your crotch is nice and rounded. Shift your weight in the direction of the front foot. Step through the back leg. Heel ball toe, bend knee. And let's do it in this direction. So we're starting with the left leg forward. Shift weight back slightly, because we're just going to open the uh, foot less than 90 degrees. Open your left toe to the corner. Check that your crotch is nice and round, your groins are open, your knees and toes are in line. Move your weight in the direction of the front foot. Step through, heel touch, heel ball toe, bend knee. Again, shift weight back slightly, open the toe. Now, re-establish your weight on that front foot that's pointing to the corner. Shift your weight through, and the bow starts. When I was talking about sh weight shifting, this is a small point, but it'll help you with this movement. When we release our weight to open this front foot, we move our weight back slightly to open it, put it back. As soon as you've opened your, your toe, put your weight back. That will also help you to keep your crotch rounded. Okay, so let's do that one more time together. And I'll start back here. Uh, you may not have enough space going forward and back uh, so we're going to do as many of them as I can fit in here, and we'll just keep going. So we're in a bow stance. I'm in a left bow stance. 
Shift weight back slightly. Open the front foot. Re-establish weight. Move your weight in the direction of the front toe, which is to the diagonal. Step through. Heel ball toe. Then knee. Go back in the bow stance. Shift weight back slightly. Open the toe to 45 degrees. Check that your crotch is rounded. Re-establish weight on the front foot. Shift your weight in the direction of the front foot. Step through. Heel ball toe. Bend knee. You're going to do it again. Shift weight back. Open the front toe to the corner. Re-establish weight. Move your weight in the direction of the front toe. Bring the back leg through. Heel ball toe. Bend knee. Uh, we can get in one more. Shift weight back slightly. Open the back foot. Shift the weight through. Step through. So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine the footwork that we've just reviewed with the movements that we already know. And we're going to go from hand strum lute to left brush knee, left brush knee to right brush knee, right brush knee to left brush knee. And then we're back at left brush knee and we're going to do a hand strum lute again. And so you can see, I can you can keep doing this indefinitely. Uh, and that's part of the sequence that over time, if this is new to you, uh, you will learn uh, as part of the first section. So let us begin. So we've done hand strum loop. And let me demonstrate how we're going to go from hand strum loop into left brush knee. Well, I'll start over here. So I'm going to circle my arms down. Big circle. When the arms get to the side, step out into a bow stance. Brush. This is number three. Arm to the shoulder and then push forward. So you can see, perhaps, this is very similar to what we did with white crane. And let me show you how it compares to white crane. Here's white crane. Number one in white crane is rotate the palms. Then we start the circle. Now freeze frame here. Look at my lower hand, my right hand. If I just turn this palm the other way, this is hand strum loop, apart from my foot, which is slightly different. But you can see that this movement from hand strum loop, sorry, from white crane, we need to get into that movement from hand strum loop. And what we're going to do with hand strum loop, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate the right palm up so that it can then do the big swing. So let's do that together. So we are, uh, let me do it this way first and then I'll turn to the side. So we've done hand strum loop. One, rotate the left palm up. Two, Big swing to the side, step out as the arms up to the side, the back, the back, side back corner. Three, brush with the left, right to the shoulder, four, push through. And close the back in. Let's just go into hand strum loot again. One, rotate the left, the right palm. Two, big circle down, circle up, step out. Brush onto the shoulder and push. A couple of things I want to highlight here. One is let's start again. So we're in hand strum loop. One, rotate the right palm, circle down. Now the left arm is going to come down going to come down. One of the things, if you remember when I was demonstrating the application with Susan, I was imagining somebody was punching straight at me and I was deflecting that punch down. So when we do brush knee, we always want to show this up and down with the front arm. So we have it here even. It's not as big, but we have that up and down uh, in brush knee. The other thing I want to remind you of is where we are looking, where our gaze is going. 
So let us practice together again. So we're starting in hamstrung glute. And now I will call out the gaze. So first, rotate the right palm up. Two, as the arms swing, your eyes go in the direction of your left palm and then pick up the right palm. Now you're looking at the back corner. As the left swings forward, your eyes are going in the direction of your left hand until you get to the front and then you push out. When I say look in the direction of your hand, I don't mean look at your hand. I mean look at the horizon in the direction that that hand is. So let's do that a couple of times. So we're in hands from loop. So one, rotate the right palm up. Two, swing down with the right, up with the left, up with the right, down with the left. Close, so your heel touch, you're looking to the back right corner. Brush, follow the left palm, looking at the horizon as the arm comes to the front, and push. So we're in left brush knee. So let's go into hand strum the loot again, because we know how to do that. Yield your weight forward, bring the back foot in, push with the ball, pull with the right arm, make a big circle with the arm, lift the left, push down with the right. You're in hand strum loop. Left brush knee, rotate the left palm. Big circle, look to the back corner, step out into a bow stance. Look back as the left arm polishes the table and then keep looking to the front as you strike out. We'll be doing this sequence more towards the end of the practice. I want to show you the second part. So we've ended up in left brush knee. What you've seen is from left brush knee, we can go into hand strum lute. But from left brush knee, we can also go into right brush knee. So let me sh let's work on how we change from left brush knee to right brush knee. So left brush knee to right brush knee is the footwork that we discussed earlier. Because left brush knee, uh, I'm starting with my left leg in front, and then I go with the right leg in front. So the footwork is what we did earlier. Now, the arm movements. The first thing, so let me show you the transition and then we'll break it down. So one, shift your weight forward, lift the left hand up so it's about halfway. Two, turn the left toe to the corner, make a big round shape with the left arm, you're still looking to the front. Now, one arm down circle, one arm up circle. Look to the back corner, heel touch as the arms up to the corner, brush as the head comes to the front and push. Again. So we're in left brush knee, left leg forward, right arm is pushing out, left arm is hanging by your side, by your knee. So one, shift your weight back slightly, lift the left arm to about 45 degrees. Now as you open the, the left toe to the corner, it's a body turn, your arm rotates. So this is the thing we've practiced before. Waist leads the limbs. So as the knee goes out, the arm comes in. You are still looking in the straightforward direction. Shift the weight, one arm up, one arm down. Heel touch, brush, and push. Do it from this direction. Let's do it together. So we're in left brush knee, left leg forward, right arm pushing out. One, shift weight back, lift the left arm to 45 degrees. Two, left toe to corner, right arm a nice big circle in front of you. Now your, if you imagine the center line, the big plane down your center, your fingertips are on either side of that line. You're still looking at the front, that's where your opponent is. Now, big circle. Step up, heel touch, brush, and push. I just want to 
say something I said mm, eight minutes ago in a slightly different context. Remember when I was saying when we were starting from a hamstrung loot that this left arm needs to go up and down a bit because I'm doing a deflect. The same thing is true when I'm starting in left brush knee. So here, this right arm, this forward arm is now going to be is now going to do a deflect. One of the one of the temptations for us in this movement is we shift back our weight and we turn like this. And if you do this, you can see that my face is now entirely unprotected. Somebody can just come right up to me and hit me in the face. So the reason when we start this movement and we open is we keep the right arm in front of us to protect against the opponent, which is still in front. If they punch at us, we can then deflect away. And so that's why we keep this in front and then step through. So let's do left brush knee to right brush knee a couple of times. So we're in left brush knee, left leg in front, right arm striking out. One, shift weight back slightly, left arm to 45 degrees. Two, with body turning, open the left toe to the corner. Your left arm is nice and rounded. Now, with one arm down circle, one arm up circle, step through, look to the back corner. Foot flattens as you brush the table, knee bends as you strike out. We'll do it again. This time, I'll remind you of the footwork that we were talking about earlier. Shift back, weight slightly. Left arm goes up to 45 degrees. Turn the toe out, nice round circle with the left arm. Re-establish your weight on the left foot. Make sure your crotch is rounded, that particularly your back knee is not tilted in. Three, one arm down circle, one arm up circle, step through into a bow stance, brush and push. So we're now in right brush knee. And now we're going to go from right brush knee to left brush knee, which is what we've just done on the other side. So the first thing we're going to do, so we're in right brush knee, so the right leg is forward, the left arm is striking out. Shift weight back slightly, lift the right arm to 45 degrees. With body turning, turn the right toe out 45 degrees, left arm a nice circle in front of you. Now, the right arm down circle, left arm up circle, and then they chain. Look to the back corner, heel touch with the bow, brush, and push. So let's do left brush knee to right brush knee again. So we're in, uh, we're in right brush knee. Yeah, I'll start go this way. So we've done right brush knee, we're going to go into left brush knee, so right leg forward, left arm pushing out, shift back weight, right arm to 45 degrees. With body turning, open the toe, right arm nice and round in front of you, but your left arm is still protecting your front, your opponent is still in front of you. Now imagine they strike, deflect down as the back arm comes out, heel touch, brush and push. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one end and we're going to do left brush knee, right brush knee, left brush knee, right brush knee a few times. So you can just go from one to the other. So that's one of the things I hope you'll have time to practice this week is just go from one brush knee to the other in as much space as you have. Turn around, come back. Okay, so we're going to start in left brush knee. Left leg forward, right arm striking out. Remember what we were saying about the posture. Your chest is square to the front, right palm is sitting. Right brush knees, shift weight back slightly, lift the left arm to 45 degrees. With body turning, turn the left toe to the corner, right arm makes a circle, re-establish your weight, check, crotch rounded. 
circle down with the left, deflect with the right, out to the corner, heel touch in the bow stance, brush as the left arm comes to the shoulder, and then push as the left pushes out. So now we're in right brush knee, we're going to go into left brush knee, shift weight back slightly, lift the right arm to 45 degrees, open the right toe, re-establish the weight, shift the weight through, heel touch, arms to the back, brush, right arm to the shoulder as the foot flattens, push, we're in left brush knee, we're going to do right brush knee, shift weight back, open the toe, left arm circle in front of you, you're still looking in the straight direction, now go to the side, stepping through, looking to the back corner, brush as the left arm comes to the shoulder, push as the left arm strikes out, and one more, Shift weight back, lift the right arm to 45 degrees. Open, swing, heel touch when the arms are at the side, brush and push. And release. So what we do in the form is there is a sequence in the middle of the form. Uh, and uh, from personal experience, it's really easy to forget bits of it because it all blurs together. It's all sort of <laughs> very similar things. Um, the packet that I sent uh, to everybody in the class at the beginning of the course has a list of all the movements in the first section. So if you get confused, have a look at that. Um, when we finish, I will also talk about there's a handout uh, in the um, Tai Chi Association journal that has pictures of Master Young Jun doing this that you could also refer to. So let us start. We're going to start in. Actually, we're going to start in white crane. So what we're going to do is white crane, left brush knee, hand strum loop, left brush knee, right brush knee, left brush knee, hand strum loop, left brush knee. So that's the sequence. Let's see how many times we can do that before we run out of time. We're in white crane. Left brush knee, we rotate the arms, swing, step out, brush, push. We're in left brush knee. Hands from loop, yields forward weight, step in, push with the ball, pull back the arms, land. And strum loop. Left brush knee, rotate the right palm, circle the right out and the left out, heel touch, brush and push. Right brush knee, shift back weight, left arm to 45 degrees. Open the left toe to the corner, left arm, nice big round circle, still looking at the straight direction. Shift your weight towards the corner. Circle the arms out to the back corner, heel touch, brush, foot flattens as the arm comes to the shoulder, and then push. Left brush knee, shift weight back slightly, right arm 45 degrees, open the toe, right arm ward off in front of you, swing one arm up, one arm down, step out to the corner, heel touch as the arms are at the back, brush, and push. So we're back at left brush knee, we're going to do a hand strong loop. Yield forward weight, bring the back foot in, push with the ball, pull with the right hand, turn the bicycle wheel, lift with the left, push down with the right. Left brush knee, circle the right palm up, big circle with the arms, step out as the arms go to the back, brush as the foot flattens and the arm comes to the shoulder, and push. So that is the sequence that we do uh, in the form. So let's do that again. And we'll do it going this direction for a change. Okay, we're in white crow. Left brush knee, one, rotate the palms. Two, circle the arms out, step both stops. Brush as the foot flattens, the arm comes to the shoulder, push as you strike out. 
Hands from loot, yield forward weight, bring the back foot in, center line two sides. Push up with the ball of the left foot, pull the right hand back, heel touch, left arm up, right arm down. Left brush knee, rotate the right palm up, left arm up circle and then down circle, out to the corner, step out for both stance, brush and push. Now we're going to go into right brush knee. Shift weight back, left arm to 45 degrees. Turn the left toe out, circle, arms to the back corner, step out into a bow. Brush as the foot flattens on to the shoulder, push as the left arm pushes out, right arm to the right thigh. Left brush knee, shift back weight, lift the right arm, open the right toe. Now big circle with the arms, as they close at the back, heel touch. Brush and push. Hands from loop, shift weight forward, bring the back foot in. Push with the left ball, pull with the right hand with the chest turn, heel touch, lift with the left, push down with the right. Left brush knee, rotate the right palm up, big circle with the arms, look to the back corner, step with the left foot out to a bow, brush and push. And release. So there we are. That is the knee, the brush knee sequence. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, everybody.